In this video, we're going to learn how to create a login screen using React Native. I'm going to start by creating a new component called login, but before that, let me create a folder called src to have a clear structure. Inside this, we're going to have components, which will contain our components from now on. And we're going to have a separate directory for each component. Inside this, we're going to have the JS file. Let's define our component. Now, if I reload this, nothing will change because in the root component, it's still the splash that is being returned. So I need to import login from src components, login, login, and it should return an instance of login. And if you reload it, you'll see a blank screen. Now I want to make it look nicer. So I'm starting with the background color of this screen. And I'll pick a blue color from flat viewer colors again. All right. Now I want to divide this screen into two sections. The first section is the logo container, which will contain a logo and a short description of the app. So I'm going to give an empty slide to it. And the second one, is the form container which will contain the inputs and a login button. Now let's add the logo image to the logo container. For that we can use image component which is a component for displaying images in React Native. I imported it and we can pass the image through the source prop. So I'm making a new folder called images inside the src folder. And I'm going to copy the logo to this directory. And like Webpack, you can treat images like normal resources, which means that you can use this require function for importing an image. As you can see, it's too huge, so we need to give the dimensions of this image in order to make it smaller. And for that, I'm going to create a new style object. I'm going to call it logo. It's worth to note that the units are points on iOS and density independent uh, pixels on Android, which means that on different devices it would be the same, so it's not in pixels. Now it's a square with side length of 100 points. In order to center it, I can use the Ellen item style and I give it to the logo container. So I set it to center and I want it to fill its parent as well. So I say flex, flex go one. And if I want it to be center aligned vertically as well, I can use justify content. I want to add a short description below the logo. So I create a text saying a nap. Oh, made for GitHub using React Native. And let's give some styles to it. Styles that title. And let's create this object here. I'm going to give a white color to it. And let's see if the changes. Let's add a space between the logo and this text using margin top. As you can see, the text is too long and I want it to be the same size as the logo horizontally. So I can use the width style and it can be almost the same. I guess 160 would be good. All right, and let's center it using text align center. You can also decrease the opacity of the text in order to make it dissolve in the background. Let's say opacity 0.6, it was too low. Yeah, it's good. All right, so the logo container will uh, fill its parent and leaves a space for the form container. And for the form, let's create uh, a new component called login form. And I'm gonna Define the component here. Before implementing this component, let's uh, import it in the login component. So we need to import it 
from logging for and we have to add an element of this inside the form container. Now we want to have two text inputs here. So we can use the text input component from React Native. The first text input is the username or email field. And the second one is the password. But both of them will have the same style. So I'm going to create the first one and duplicate it. Let's reload the app to see what happens. As you can see, nothing happened. So I'm going to add a height to it and a background color. Now you can see the inputs here. Now I'm going to give transparent white to the background color adding a padding style to the container we can add a space between the inputs and the edges of this component and with margin button we can separate the inputs now let's test it cool but uh, I want to decrease the alpha of the background color But uh, what about white color and horizontal padding at 10 points? It looks better. We can also use placeholders for the text inputs, which will be rendered before entering any text by the user in these inputs. So the first one is username or email and the second one is the password. Okay, uh, now you can see it's dark, the color is not good, so you can also pass the color of the placeholder as the pl uh, placeholder text color prop. Cool. Okay, now it's time to create a button. For creating buttons, you need to wrap your element inside a touchable element. And I recommend touchable opacity, which works on all the platforms. And I'm going to create an element of this. And inside that, we're going to have a text. And I should import it first. And the text should say login. Okay, and if I click on it, it fades in and out. So for these two elements, we will have different styles. And for the touchable, I'm gonna add a style called button container. For the text, I'm gonna have button text. And I want it to be a dark blue. And let's add a padding vertically. And for the text, it should be center aligned with a white color. I also want to increase the padding. Okay, let's test it again. And I want to make it bold, the text of the button. So I say font weight 700. Okay, and the margin of the inputs is too high. So let's decrease it as well. It's still too high. It looks better now. Um, there is also another problem. Uh, as you can see, the passwords are not secure here. So in order for passwords uh, to stay secure, we need to obscure them. And for that, you can use secure text answer prop and set it to true. 
And as you can see, instead of the text, it will show some asterisk. There is also another problem. The users will use the app on their smartphones, so we need to test what happens if we use soft keyboards. And as you can see, the inputs go underneath the keyboard. And it doesn't represent a good UX. This problem can also be solved using another React Native component called Keyboard Avoiding View. This component adjusts itself in accordance with the keyboard size and it can have different behaviors, height, position, and padding. And I'm going to go with padding, which adjusts uh, the bottom padding based on the keyboard size. So I'm going to import it. I'm going to replace the wrapper component, which was a view component, with uh, a keyboard avoiding view with this padding behavior. Now let's reload it. You can see how the padding changes as the keyboard's position changes. All right. Now let's change this return key label to something more appropriate. And for that, we can use this return key type, which can be next for the username or email. And for the password, it should be go. Now, whenever we focus on the username or email, it will show next button, and for password, it will show go. Now, whenever I click on the next button, I want it to focus on the next input instead of closing it. So, I have to keep a reference of this input of the password input for consequent uses. So I'm going to say the input should be stored in this password input. And whenever the return key is pressed, a function that is passed uh, through the unsoft editing prop will be called. So in this function, I'm going to say that the Password input should be focused on. Okay. Now you can see that whenever I click on the next, it will focus on the password input. Also, this keyboard is not appropriate for email addresses. So we can use this keyword type prop, which accepts these values, default email address, numeric, phone pad, for different usages. And we're going to go with email address and let's say keyword type equals to email address. Now you can see this add sign button here which makes it easier for the users to enter their email addresses. Also this auto correction and auto capitalization is a pet peeve so let's get rid of those as well. You can see how to capitalize none and how to correct false. Okay. And the last thing, let's change the color of this status bar. For that, you can use status bar component and you can put an element of it uh, wherever you want in the component. I want to put it up there. And for iOS, you can do use this uh, bar style with light content. There you go. If you have any questions or comments, leave it in the comment sections below. Till next time.